Once you've got your overall WordPress website set up with a theme installed and some basic pages and overall structure in place, it's time to start adding a document library to it. And I'll show you how to do that now. Here we have the demo site for Document Library Pro and you can see that it provides two ways to list your documents. You can list them in folders where each folder is a category and that can have subcategories in it. And then once you get down to a subcategory that has documents in it, the documents are displayed in a table. So there's various different information about each document and you can either have a text link, a button or a file type icon, which people click on to download the actual document. And you can click around to view the documents in the different folders. And lower down, we have an example of a table which lists all of our documents. And instead of dividing them by category, you can easily filter to find documents in a particular category. Um, with both options, you can display whatever you want in the table. Um, you can even display audio and embedded video to create, for example, an audio gallery. And it's really flexible and you can just drill down to find exactly what you want. So it's a really user friendly way to display documents, either for your staff and colleagues or for the wider public if you're providing online resources for everybody to access. Next, I'll show you how to set it up. So we'll go into the WordPress admin for our website. And then we go to plugins, add new. Before you do this, you actually need to buy the plugin. And when you do that, you will receive an email with a link to download a zip file containing the plugin files and also your license key. I've already done that, so I'm now going to install it, but you need to do that before you can follow these steps. So we've gone to plugins, add new, and then we go upload plugin and choose file. And in my downloads folder, I have document library pro.zip, which I'm going to open. And then I'm going to click install now. And that will upload the plugin files to my WordPress website. I'm then going to activate the plugin. Let's get rid of some of these storefront notices. And now I've installed the plugin, you see a notice at the top saying, please enter your license key. And you need that to make the plugin work. The license key was in the email you received. I'm going to paste my license key in here. Make sure there's no extra spaces or anything because it won't work if you do that. So make sure you've just got the license key and then click activate and it will say your license key is active, which means you can start using the plugin now. Next, I'll talk you through the plugin settings. On the main settings page, the general tab, we've got uh, document data. So adding documents is very much like adding posts or pages in WordPress. So your document library comes with certain fields for each document, such as the title, a content area, a featured image, and so on. And some of these are optional. So if you want to really simplify the page in the admin where you add the documents, you can untick anything that you don't want. Um, I'm going to keep everything active so that you can see what's available in the plugin. And if you want to create extra fields, you can actually install a free custom fields or taxonomies plugin and add custom fields and ta taxonomies, which allow you to store extra data about your documents. So let's say you wanted to add a publisher because you're listing ebooks or publications of some sort, then you could install a free plugin and add a field to your documents which we'll use to store the publisher and if you look in the document library pro documentation we've provided full instructions on how to add extra custom field types for your documents and for this course though i'm just going to use the built-in fields to show you what the plugin does straight out of the box so we click save changes and then i'm going to go to the document libraries tab so to give some context, we're in documents settings here. This section is all added by the Document Library Pro plugin. And we go to the Document Libraries tab. Here we've got a page which will automatically list our documents. You can select a different page if you want to list them somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. But that page has been created for you. You can also choose whether to display the document library in folders. And just to remind you, but think back to the demo, this is the folders option where if you've got categories, it will display them within folders and subfolders like we saw. 
If you do not tick the folders option, then it will just be a simple table and you can add filters and so on as you choose. So that's the folders option. Um, I think I won't bother ticking that. And you've got some columns. This links you through the documentation so you can see what columns are available. Um, here we've got the title, the excerpt, which is a brief summary of the document, the categories and a link to actually access the document. So I'll leave it with the default for now. Actually, I might add something extra. Let's add file underscore size and file type. I'll show you the full range of what's possible. So file size, file type, and you put a comma between each one. You don't need to remember all this syntax. Just use the read more link. Image size, I'll skip through most of these because they're self-explanatory and I'll just focus on the ones that are particularly interesting for displaying documents. I'd say the most important settings are the document links because that's how people access your documents. Uh, you can have a button. I'll show you the demo again. This is a button, obviously. And um, so if you want people to be able to click on a button, let's do it now. So I'm going to click download and this is going to open a PDF depending on my browser settings. If my web browser was set up to download PDFs automatically, then that would just download them to my computer. But because my PDFs are opening in a browser, I'd have to click download here. This is about the user's web browser and not the plugin. So back to the document library, I'm there. And so that's a button. And we also have icons if we go back into this table. So this is an icon. So again, let's go into this spreadsheet so I'm going to click on that oh yeah it doesn't open because I can't open spreadsheets in my particular browser so what I could have done then is to right click again this is dependent on the user's browser if you want something that everybody can open I'd recommend PDFs so back to the settings so button is what we saw button you have file type icon or a text link and whether you have a button or a text link, you can actually change the text here. So if you want to write read more or view or whatever, you can put that here. You can also choose which columns are clickable to access the single document page. So I'll show you what that means here. Let's go to a document that will do. So here I'm going to click on the title of the document. And that's going to take me to a separate page for that document, which, as you can see, has various data about the document and the download button that we also saw in the table. So you can choose certain columns that will click through to that and you can also disable that completely. So if you don't want people to have a separate page they can visit for each document, then just type none in clickable columns like that. None. But I'll, I'll leave them for now. You can choose whether um, clicking on the button or icon, so that's this column, will open the document directly, which is what we saw a minute ago, or whether it will force people to access the single document page first. And you might want to open links in a new tab. That's quite popular with document libraries. If you want, um, if you have lots of documents in each table on your site, then you should enable lazy load because that prevents any performance problems. So it means you can literally list many thousands of documents without any uh, slow load times or anything. So lazy loads for if you've got lots of documents. I'll skip a few self-explanatory and we'll go to the filters. Filters are really useful because as we saw on the demo site, where are they? There they are. You can have multiple filter drop downs above the document library, which people can use to very quickly find particular documents. So filters are great. Um, if you've got either categories or tags in your table as columns, then if, that, if you click show based on columns in table, then they will appear as filter drop downs as well. But I generally recommend using the custom option. And you can just copy this here to make it easier. So even if you haven't got a categories column in your document library, you can have a categories filter. And again, if you add a comma and then tags, you can have tags as well. So um, if I would say if you're not using the folders option, you probably want filters. If you are using the folders option, then it depends on how many documents are in each table. So you could have the filter drop downs above the table within each folder. Uh, if you want to. If, so if you've got hundreds within each category, then definitely add some filters to narrow it down by tags or whatever. 
Um, but if you've just got a small number, then don't bother. You can also choose whether or not to have the search box and so on. But I think for a document library, you'd normally use most of the default options. You can also customize the design of the document library. I'm not going to bother because it automatically adapts to suit your theme and looks good pretty much out the box. But if you want to do things like add a colored um, header row to the document library or something like that, then you can do. So I'm going to leave it with the default and click save changes. So that is how to install the Document Library Pro plugin and set it up behind the scenes. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to actually start adding documents, either by adding them manually one by one or by importing them in bulk.